Hello and welcome back to the Grape Explorer. Today is quiz time. Today's quiz is all about wine service. I've called it the sommelier quiz, but it's all about wine service in the industry, in restaurants, in bars, etc. Uh, 10 questions to test your knowledge. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm the Grape Explorer. Here we do wine education, product reviews, and lots of wine tasting. So if that's your thing, consider subscribing. Okay, let's jump straight into question number one. As I say, these are all gonna be about the service of wine. So question number one then, a customer asks for a bottle of champagne. What service temperature should the bottle be? Is it A, room temperature? Is it B, chilled? Is it C, well chilled? Or is it D, lightly chilled? Champagne, of course, incredibly popular in restaurants. Uh, you'll probably know that when you order a bottle of champagne in a restaurant, ordinarily it comes out with a bucket of ice and water. The reason for that, of course, is that champagne needs to be well chilled when served. So if you've gone for answer C, you've got the first one correct. Question number two then is a question regarding the pairing of wines with certain foods. So. A customer orders a sticky toffee pudding for dessert and asks for a wine recommendation. Which of the following would be most suitable? Would it be A, a full-bodied dry red wine? Would it be B, a sweet wine? Would it be C, a light-bodied dry red wine? Or would it be D, a full-bodied dry white wine? Anyone who's done WSET at level two knows that you go into an awful lot of detail about what pairs with what and the effects that certain wines have on certain foods. For those of you who've done that, or for those of you who know, the answer here is B, it's a sweet wine. Question three, and focusing on champagne and other sparkling wines again. So why are flutes popular with sparkling wines? Is it A, they look good and they make a nice clinking sound? Is it B, they are easier to pour sparkling wines into? Is it C, that the shape decreases the amount you can drink at any one time, thus making your drink last longer? Or is it D, the shape enhances the effect of the bubbles, allowing them to travel through a larger volume of wine, increasing aroma? I find it quite interesting when it comes to sparkling wine because you, you do have your flutes, but then you have your also your quite traditional saucer type glasses as well for, for things like champagne and other sparkling wines. The answer here is D. It's all down to the shape of the glass, allowing a larger volume of wine to have bubbles travel through, which will increase the aroma. So D, correct answer there. Question four stays on a bit of a sparkling wine theme really as it's all about chilling bottles. So what is the best way to chill a bottle? Is it A to submerge it in cold water? Is it B to place it in a bucket of ice? Is it C to place it in a bucket with equal quantities of ice and water? Or is it D to blow on it really hard? <sighs> cold enough for you? Okay, um, maybe D isn't necessarily correct. There's a bit of a science that goes into chilling a bottle of wine. Um, lots of people would think that the right thing to do would be to place it into a bucket of ice. But the fact is when it comes to that, you're still allowing air to circulate around some of those ice cubes. And that air traveling around those ice cubes actually can have a negative impact on the chilling capability. By putting a bottle of champagne or other sparkling wine into a bucket with equal quantities of ice and water, you're encapsulating that bottle within the water and using the ice to chill it. Therefore, the correct answer here is C. Now, on to question five, and perhaps finally, moving on to a different style of wine. Why are red wines best served in larger style glasses? Is it A, it allows air to come into contact with a larger wine surface to develop the flavors and aromas? Is it B, this isn't actually true and they're all best suited to small glasses? Is it C, it means you can drink more wine because you're gonna be given a larger glass? Or is it D, that the sommelier's code insists that only large glasses are used for red wine? As I've said on previous videos, it's always more fun coming up with incorrect answers. So the answer here is A, it's allowing air to come into contact with a larger surface which will help develop the wine itself. Question six then, and a sommelier specific question around what they must do during the service of wine. 
So what should a sommelier always do before opening a bottle of wine? Is it A, give a detailed history on the bottle they are about to open? Is it B, check that the bottle they are opening is the one the customer ordered? Is it C, putting the bottle on the table and taking their corkscrew out of their pocket? Or is it D, offering an alternative if the sommelier is not happy with the customer's choice? Uh, we have to appeal to the old mantra here that the customer is always right. That includes the bottle that they have ordered. Even if you're not a fan or not, it doesn't matter. It's what the customer ordered that the customer wants. And one of the things that we have to do to ensure that we are giving the customer what they want is showing them the bottle and just ensuring that's the one that they've selected. So the answer here is B. Okay, we're going to stick on the theme of serving wine. Uh, Chateau Neuf de Pape is best served at what temperature? Is it A, room temperature? Is it B, chilled? Is it C, lightly chilled? Or is it D, well chilled? Again, typical sort of question you get at WSET level two. Um, service of wine and the storage of wine are actually chapters um, as part of that exam and that course. So you are expected to know a lot about what kind of wine should be served at what kind of temperature. In this case, the answer is A, it's room temperature. So for those of you who've gone for A, another one ticked off. Question eight is very much focused on the customer in a restaurant setting. Why do you taste a wine before it's served in restaurants? A, it's traditional. B, to see if you like it. C, it looks good in front of a date. Or D, to check that it is free of any faults or flaws. I think with this particular practice in restaurants, there is a bit of a common misconception that you are testing it to see if you like it. Um, and that's because a lot of the time people go, hmm, it's nice. Um, as a reaction, but what you're doing here is you're actually checking to see if there are any faults in the wine um, and therefore you would be able to say, no, this one has a fault, please send me another bottle. Uh, so the correct answer here is D, it's to check that it's free of any faults or flaws. So the next question, question nine, is all about the longevity of bottles. If wine is not consumed as soon as it is opened, it can lose its aromatic intensity. What method below extends the life of a bottle the most? Is it A, putting the cork back in? Is it B, putting a teaspoon in the bottle? Is it C, using a vacuum pump to remove any oxygen from the bottle? Or is it D, placing it in the fridge? Uh, with the exception of B, which I personally think is a bit of a wine myth, uh, a few of these answers will make a bottle last that little bit longer. Although there is only really one that's going to make it last a lot longer than others. Those of you who've been watching for my channel for a long time might know that I once did a video on wine pumps. The correct answer here is C. It's put using a vacuum pump to remove oxygen from the bottle. And finally, question 10, uh, a little bit different, uh, not really related to the service of wine at all, but for those of you who may pay attention to my previous videos. If the Grape Explorer was ordering a white wine in a restaurant, which one is he most likely to order? Would it be A, a heavily oaked Chardonnay? Would it be B, a bone dry Riesling? Would it be C, a Pinot Grigio? Or would it be D, he would never order a white wine? Interesting, because I do have a red wine right now, but those of you who watched all my videos know that I do enjoy both. It's definitely not D. I once did a Q&A because I get asked a lot of questions about what kind of wines I enjoy and, and when people ask me the question, my first answer is always the same. It's always a bone dry Riesling. The answer here is B. There we are, 10 questions for you around wine service, around the role of a sommelier. I hope you enjoyed this, a little bit different to what I've been doing usually. Uh, let me know in the comments section below if you'd like to see more in this kind of vein, uh, as well as suggesting other videos you'd like to see on this channel. For now, I'm gonna say cheers, all the best, hope you're safe and well, and see you all again soon. Cheers.